Hello everyone. In this video we will show how to grow crops successfully in a hydroponic grow tower. Some of what we cover will apply to anything grown in hydroponics, but much of the focus will be on how to use a vertical grow tower to grow crops. I will explain how to use the grow tower, the best plants to grow in the tower, and at what level in the tower they should be placed. Welcome to Expat Hydroponics. Hydroponics is growing plants without soil. It is typically a closed loop system that uses water to directly supply nutrients to plants need. There are several advantages. One is less space is required. As an example, modern soil based lettuce farms yield 20 tons per acre, whereas modern hydroponic lettuce farms yields 400 tons per acre. But the trade off is much higher capital cost for hydroponics. There are many types of hydroponics and each has advantages and disadvantages. Vertical grow towers have the advantage of taking the least amount of ground area, horizontal square feet or meters, versus the number of plants. They can also easily grow a wider variety of crops that can crafty, DWC, NFT, or some other hydroponic methods. The disadvantage is capital costs is more. Some single commercial units cost $500 or more. If you are interested in saving money and building your own, click on this link for a how-to video. Although also called a rain tower, this type of vertical hydroponics falls under the umbrella of aeroponics. Classic aeroponics involve growing plants suspended in air and then a misting system sprays the roots with water and nutrients at timed intervals. These towers use the same concept with falling drops instead of mist. In my opinion, this is a more reliable system as misters tend to get clogged and require frequent maintenance. Other type of vertical hydroponics are like the systems shown here. Though most here use NFT, nutrient film technique, or DWC, deep water culture. The first thing you need to decide is what plants you want to grow. Root crops like potatoes and carrots are not for hydroponics unless you have a specialized setup. Lettuce is one of the easier and faster growing crops and where a lot of people start. However, vertical grow towers are great for growing crops that need a sandy or more aerated soil like strawberries, tomatoes, and peppers. Also, you can grow a variety of plants in the same tower. The only caveat is that plants need to have a similar nutrient and pH profile. Here is a list of plants that are good to grow in a tower and the corresponding nutrient and pH ranges. Hit pause and take a picture or a screenshot if you want. Please take into consideration the temperature and growing environment. For example, kale and cabbage need cooler weather and watermelon needs hot weather. Some plants have hot or cold weather varieties like lettuce and tomatoes. Now that you have a plan for your tower, next is buying seeds. You can just buy packages off the carousel rack at your local hardware store or garden center, but I recommend buying direct from a seed dealer. Old seeds and seeds exposed to temperature extremes will not germinate. You don't know where and how long those supermarket seeds have been there. After months of success, I started to have germination problems. Turns out I was storing my seeds outside and they got cooked. Now I keep them in my refrigerator and seal the open packages with aluminum foil to keep the light out. Now I have no more problems. Next is planting. Pick an inert media like rock wool cubes or cocoa fiber. Plant the seed at a shallow depth and then soak with water. It is important to understand the germination time and temperature that is ideal for your plants. This can be found on the back of the seed packet or the seed supplier website. The seed does not need nutrients until the true leaves appear. The very first leaves to show up are embryonic leaves. It is time to feed a weak solution of nutrients when you see the first true leaves and then transfer it to a tower around two weeks after germination. Along with the recommended temperature, there should also be information on how long you should expect until the seed sprouts. We plant the seeds and keep them in relative darkness, gradually exposing the seedlings to more and more sunlight, and then at 10 days after germination, transfer to the hydroponic system. At this time, you will transfer the seedling to a cup you use in the hydroponic system. If not already in a Rockwell cube, handle the seedling and roots gently. Whether using Crackty, DWC, NFT, or like us, a vertical tower, make sure that the water can get to at least part of the grow media. Capillary or wicking action will get water to the plant roots. Our type of grow tower is sometimes called a rain tower. It is normally classified as a form of aeroponics. Aeroponics is a form of hydroponics whereby the roots are suspended in air 
and there is timed off and on misting system that moistens the roots. The advantage of this is the roots get a lot of exposure to air. This is great for crops like strawberries, tomatoes, and peppers that like aerated or sandy soil. We set up our grow tower with a cheap 24-hour mechanical timer that runs 15 minutes on and then 15 minutes off. This is good for plants and saves on electricity. If the plan is to grow multiple types of plants in the grow tower, the locations of the plants are important. Heavy fruiting and larger plants like melons, squash, and bush tomatoes should be planted on the lowest third of the plant holes. These are vining plants and heavy fruit like watermelons will spread out on the ground around the tower. The large plants also will block the sun for smaller plants if grown high up on the tower. Peppers, eggplant, vining tomatoes, and vining beans are examples for the middle third of the tower. Be sure to set up a trellis for these vining plants to help support the fruit. The top of the tower is good for leafy greens, strawberries, lettuce, Swiss chard, kale, and herbs. Remember to take into consideration plants that will grow well in your climate and that have similar nutrient and pH profiles since they will all use and share the same nutrient profile set up for the tower. After filling your nutrient tank with water, it is time to add nutrients. For the beginner, it's easiest to buy the A and B solutions online or from a local gardening center. Follow the, the directions best for the crops you will grow and add nutrients to the tank accordingly. For us, we mix our A and B solutions to save on cost. If you're interested, click on the video that shows how we make A and B solutions. Add the A and B solution to your tank to get the desired PPM. This brings us to the testing equipment you need to purchase. You need a TDS meter and a pH meter. You can purchase these online and should cost no more than around $10 for the pair or $10 for one that does both. Check the water level of the tank daily. The level will decrease due to both evaporation and the plants using water. Replace the water as needed. Check both the pH and PPM levels in the tank. Use either pH up or pH down as needed to keep the acidity in the optimum range for your plants. pH up and down can be purchased online or at a local gardening center. The nutrient level will decrease as the plants grow. Use a TDS meter to measure the PPM level and add nutrients to stay in the target range for the tower. Finally, check the tower daily to make sure the plants are getting water and the timer is working properly. Because the roots are in air, they will dry out quickly and the plant may die if the pump stops working or gets clogged. Vertical towers are a great way to grow a variety of plants. Have fun and God bless.